Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to what's going to be, I guess I shouldn't say back, but welcome to what's going to be a brand new series on this channel. We're going to be going over some Windows Server things, just general Windows Server. Um, we're going to start with VMware Workstation Player. We're going to build our base main server in VMware, and then from there, we're going to use Hyper-V to build another one, to build a virtual server. Um, so this would be basically acting as if we're running a host um, that's then going to be running a guest, which is the mo the best way to run, uh, you know, servers. Um, Hyper-V is a is a great tool, and it makes backups a lot easier. It makes them a lot more thorough. It makes recovery time um, for restoration if any kind of major uh, major issues happen to revert that image. It makes that a lot easier. So that's what we're going to be um, what we're going to be teaching you today. So we're going to start by creating a virtual machine with uh, VMware Workstation Player, and I have I'm going to be using Windows Server 2016. Um, this is an actual version. This is an actual licensed copy. I'm not going to license it though. Uh, we're going to go to standard. And administrator, and we're just you know, we're not going to give this account a password right now. It is this going to be our HV01 server? Um, so we're going to start building the HV01. Um, let me double check where I'm storing this. No, I'm going to store this on my data drive. Oops, I'll just find out how this works. We're going to create a new folder here, and this is going to be, there we go, so we're going to go to this folder, and uh, we're going to make 80 gigs, just to be sure. Actually, we're going to make this 120, because we're going to build a Hyper-V server within it. Uh, to be safe, we're going to do 256. Uh, this is a large drive that I'm putting it into, so I'm not worried about that. Customize hardware. Um, my computer has 32 gigs of RAM, so I'm going to give this guy 16. Um, I'm going to give this guy, yeah, two processing cores. And NAT, we're going to do a bridged connection. Uh, for VMware, we're just going to put it actually on my network. So that's, that's how we're going to do this. We're going to finish it now, and it's going to wait and boot the machine. So that's where we're going here. Almost always this will give you some update options. Um, but um, I tend to ignore most of them. Uh, I apologize if my monitor looks weird. It's kind of bumped up in resolution. It's an actual like true 4K monitor. But I, I'm bumping up resolu or like zoom to 300% so that you guys can actually see it. Unless you're watching on a... Um, on a larger monitor so trying to do that to make it easier for you guys I really like my main monitor so that's why I'm using it um, let's see alright we're going to do Windows installation it's automatically going to start the installation and I'll get back with you once this install is done alright this upgrade has gone through it's giving me a weird error shouldn't be an issue let's, let's just look into a temporary profile can't find anything. So now we're in our server. Uh, I'm gonna real quick change the display settings just to to make it a lot easier to see here. And I'm not quite sure where I want to go with this. Let's see. Last one to yeah, probably makes sense. And I don't think I can zoom in at all, which is unfortunate. Ah, yes I can. 150, you can go to 200. That should be fine. Okay. Um, so here we are inside of our virtual server now. Um, let's see, easy installing should be done. I don't need to worry about this banner. Um, we're gonna go ahead and install some roles and features with uh, Hyper-V Manager, so, or with Server Manager. 
can go ahead and install uh, Hyper-V. So manage, add roles or features, and we're going to go ahead and do a role based from this server. And we're going to go, we're going to do Hyper-V. And that's just about all we're going to do. Ah, uh, we have not turned on virtualization in this virtual processor, so we'll have to do that real quick. I'm also going to go ahead and rename this server. So Windows key pause break pulls up this menu mm -hmm. on the keyboard. We're going to go ahead and change. We're going to keep it as a member of a work group. And we're going to name this computer HV01. It's going to be our Hyper-V host number one. Um, and then we'll go ahead and uh, I'm not going to restart because I want to completely shut down. Not a planned. And we'll shut this server down. And it's going to close out. We're going to open VMware again. And now we're going to go into the virtual machine settings. I should have paid attention to this when I was doing it the first time, but processors we're going to enable virtualization and we're going to play it we will install hyper -V. well it's not right hyper v and we should be able to add it with no issues we're going to go next that's really all we need we're going to add this to our bridge And yeah, we're good with that. Mm. Best practice is to always store it in like the C directory or D if this has a data drive. And you go hyper D. It's just always a good option, and then you might as well store the the data piece in the same location. That way, you only have one location to back out. And we're now installing Hyper-V, and we will copy, oops, we're going to copy this over to the desktop real quick uh, to build this ISO for Hyper-V. And we also have a restart pending, we can also take a look at Windows updates real quick. And of course Windows isn't activated because I haven't thrown in a license key. But typically, especially if you use Volume Licensing Center for your licensing, you're going to build Windows on unactivated ISO. And let's see here. Um, that file looked like it copied over, so I'm going to go ahead and reboot to finish up the installation. And it'll install a couple updates on my host. I also was planning on enabling remote desktop, but promptly forgot. up in a second something to keep in mind when working with Hyper-V is that your control and alt keys are your friend if you're in the guest OS, your mouse will not move. Control Alt brings your mouse back. Um, if you're not familiar with VMware Workstation, as I what I meant to say, I apologize. And looks like updates have installed. We're about to install our guest. We're gonna build our first guest server as a domain control. So we'll have a DC01 coming through here. So let's go ahead and build that. Uh, Hyper-V should be installed. I'm also going to open up Windows Administrative Tools and just pin some other stuff. So, if Windows Administrative Tools wants to work for me. Oh, 
once everything loads, it'll eventually be fine. Alright, when is administrative tools? I should be able to right-click these now, maybe more. Open file location. Perfect. Uh, I don't need server manager, so let me go ahead and close that. And let's see, hacker view manager, server manager, you know, resource monitor isn't a bad one. Um, don't need SEs, components, computer, um, event viewer is not a bad one. Services. Let's get these guys in here. We're just going to copy these shortcuts to the desktop. That way we have easy access to these, all these features here. And we're going to go ahead and open up Hyper-V now. Let's see. We'll go ahead and build my host. So we're going to go to a new virtual machine. New virtual machine. We're going to name this DC01. Store in default location. We're going to go generation 2. Startup memory. We're going to go with. gigs connection we're gonna go to our bridge to switch we're gonna create a virtual hard disk and we're gonna make it 60 gigs and one second thought we're gonna make it 128 because uh, want it to be so what am I thinking here I'm gonna have some data shares on it as well not that they're gonna get used but you know we might have um, still can do our 2016. A thing with Hyper-V is any kind of a host OS licensing will power two virtual servers as well. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm just going to double check this real quick. 4 gigs of RAM, one virtual core should be fine for a Domain controller. We're also going to always start this because it's domain controller. We want it to always run. Now we're going to go ahead and connect and power it on. Um, while we're waiting for this to power on, actually, just kidding, got to boot from CD DVD and we'll have to run through the configure real quick. I'm going to enable remote desktop on my host server. And remote desktop's not showing up there, so we're going to go in the head and access it through settings. Um, would help if I knew where. Feed system. No, it's not. Unless they changed it. Actually, Windows Server still might be in control. Allow remote, remote connections. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. Now we're in our host server here. Install server 2016. I'm going to run through the setup here. And I will get back to you guys. Uh, 16 standard desktop experience. Accept license terms, obviously. Custom install to our 128 gig drive. Next. And we'll install. I'll get back with you once we are installed.